Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit special for you guys. I'm going to be making a homemade apple crumble. No couponing for me today. I know today's Sunday and the temptation is definitely there to get out there and do some couponing. But I just, I can't. It's not safe. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to bring anything back home to my family. So no couponing for me this week and most likely no couponing for me next week either. But I am in the kitchen. I'm going to be making a homemade apple crumble completely from scratch. It's super simple. Uh, so yeah guys, I'm gonna run down the ingredients. Please like, subscribe, comment. I love hearing from you guys. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's safe and with their family. And yeah guys, let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a rundown of the ingredients. I'm gonna be using granulated sugar, brown sugar, all-purpose flour, oatmeal. Now this is uh, quick cooking oats. This isn't the old-fashioned. This is the like the one-minute cooking oats. Some vanilla, I have uh, some vanilla from Mexico, and some ground cinnamon, some salt, apples of course, I'm using Granny Smith apples, these have been sitting around the house for about four or five days, so um, they're just right, hopefully they're not too too sour, um, I have about 11 of them here, I don't know how many I'm going to use yet, but uh, Granny Smith apples, and we're going to be needing some butter, now, I only have this much butter. I need, you would need two sticks for this recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, replace some of that butter with margarine. So this is a big block of margarine that I have. Um, I'm going to be using two st about a stick and a half worth of margarine and then my half stick of butter. But you would normally want to use just butter, unsalted butter. So hopefully it works with margarine. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. And yeah, guys, I think that's it for the ingredients. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I'm gonna give my hands a good scrubbing and uh, just make sure all the germs are off and we can get started. And you're gonna wanna start your oven at 350 degrees. I have to clear out mine. Are you guys like us? We use our stove for, um, we use our oven for uh, like storing pots and pans and it's kind of just like storage. So I gotta clear it all out and then I will set the oven to 350 degrees and we can get started. In this bowl, I have my crumble mixture. Now, it is a half a cup of butter, cold, right out of the fridge. You don't want it softened. And there's also a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a half cup of granulated sugar, a half cup of light brown sugar, or you can use dark, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna be adding a cup of quick cooking oats, and I also have a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of salt so all I have to do now is just add my oats and then with clean hands I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna start squishing everything together until it forms a crumble so let me add my oats and then I will see you guys shortly okay I just added my uh, quick cooking oats now I'm gonna go ahead I just wash my hands get my hands in there and start mixing it all together um, after I get it to the right consistency I'm gonna throw in a little splash of vanilla that's optional I like to do it because um, it just makes the crumble taste really really good so yeah let me get my hands in there you could also dice up your butter into little cubes that'll make it a little bit easier when you're mixing everything together I probably should have done that but it's all right, I can make this work. And you want your mixture to be a little wet filling. You don't want it to be super dry and crumbly. You want it to be moist and chunky. Just put your hands in there and squeeze, oops, until you break up the butter get everything incorporated. 
and please don't leave out the half a teaspoon of salt in here because salt really really brings out the flavor in this crumble and it gives you like that sweet and salty flavor Ouch. this is a consistency you want when you press it together it clumps you want to make sure there's no dry spots with no dry flour. You want everything to be incorporated with the butter just so it makes like a nice moist crumble. So this is perfect. And a little tip, if you don't even want to do an apple crumble, you can throw this on a sheet pan, line it with parchment, bake it off, and you can have crumble just to eat like that, or you can put it over yogurt. Um, I used to work in a bakery, and we used to always have stuff like this on hand. And we'd package it up in a little bag and sell it just like this, and people would love it. So, that's it guys, that's the crumble. I'm gonna clean up, get my cutting board out, and we can start chopping some apples. Okay you guys, I need to just do a little announcement before you guys start. I made a mistake in the video and I forgot to peel my apples. You're going to want them to be peeled, cored, and sliced. Now I'm just going to continue to make the recipe because I'm not going to waste it, but you're going to want your apples peeled definitely. I don't know how it's going to turn out with the skins on, but hey, I'm not going to throw it away. So let's continue with the video. Now let's go ahead and start cutting the Granny Smith apples. So these are all washed, what I'm going to do is you're going to cut around the core Oops. Oh. you're just going to leave it just the core like this this will be tossed in the trash and we have our wedges what you're going to do is just You want them as uniform as possible, just like that. Let me do a few more for you guys. Just like that. You don't want them too big because then they're going to take a long time to cook in the oven. You also don't want them too, too thin because then they're going to get mushy. Just like that. And this is optional, but you can also throw, after you're done chopping all these, you can throw a squeeze of lemon over all of them just to keep them from turning brown. And that'll also um, add a little bit of a citrus taste to your apple crumble. I don't, I personally don't like that flavor with apple pie or apple crumble. I know I've seen a lot of recipes that want to incorporate like uh, citrus zest or orange zest or stuff like that. I don't like that because I think it takes away from the flavor of the apple. So I'm just going to stick with that. Traditional flavors. Okay, so this is 10 apples exactly. This is a perfect amount. Uh, like I said, my apples are about medium size, not too big, even kind of small actually. Uh, Ten apples, which is probably, this is probably about five pounds of apples, four to five pounds. So what I'm going to add to this is a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar, a teaspoon, uh, to a teaspoon and a half, it, it just depends on how much you like uh, cinnamon, I'll probably just add a teaspoon of cinnamon, a uh, teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of salt and I'm also going to be adding uh, two tablespoons of water now that sounds weird but the reason I'm adding the water is because I want there to be some sort of a liquid in the apples now if you're going to be using the lemon juice you won't have to add as much water uh, but I'm going to be doing the using the water just because the water is going to mix with the sugars and the cinnamon and the vanilla and it's going to create kind of like a paste uh, and you want the paste to, that's you want a paste because you that's what's going to be able to coat the apples you want some kind of a liquid in here you can also add a little splash of orange juice if you want 
Like I said, I try to stay away from the citrus flavors when I'm making any kind of apple dessert. Uh, but yeah, two tablespoons of water, half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of granulated sugar, teaspoon of cinnamon, teaspoon of vanilla, pinch of salt. Okay guys, this is what your apple should look like. I'm probably going to go ahead and add just a little bit more cinnamon just to get it a little bit more brown. Um, I ended up adding a quarter cup of water. I had said two tablespoons, but it wasn't enough, so I ended up just doing a full quarter cup. And like I said, the water makes the sugars and everything combine into like a paste, just like that, like you see like that, just so that the paste, it covers the apples a lot better than trying to mix uh, dry sugars onto the apple. So yeah guys, this is what the mixture looks like. You can go ahead and try one raw to see if um, you like the sweetness. That's what I'm gonna do. I might have to add a little bit more sugar. Let's see. Nope, that's perfect. Okay, so this is the pan I'm gonna use. Um, it is an 11 by 13, just like a casserole pan, it's glass. My oven's set at 350. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get some of this margarine. Just gonna spread it all over the pan just so uh, to ensure that my apples don't stick. Okay, my pan is buttered. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in the apples first. See how you get that nice liquid on the bottom? That's what you want. Then I'm gonna get the crumble. And I'm gonna cover the entire top with the crumble pieces. You don't wanna leave, you don't want any apples to show, you want the entire top covered. Uh, this recipe can also be halved if you don't wanna do such a big amount. You can cut it in half. And obviously the best part to me is the crumble. So that's why I like to make a lot of it. Perfect. So this is what it looks like. Got a little bit of pieces of apple showing, that's okay. I'm just bummed that I forgot to peel the apples, you guys. Ugh, it's gonna bother me. I hope it still tastes good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna start at 30 minutes and go from there. I think it's probably gonna take about 45 to 50 minutes. To okay, I'm gonna place this on an old sheet pan just in case it bubbles over, which I think it is going to. So um, just to protect my oven so I don't have to clean it later, uh, just gonna put it on top of a sheet pan.